Lips as Red as Blood, Part One. Once upon a time, a little girl named Gretel walked down a wide, lonely road all by herself. She was as sad as a little girl can be, for the person whom she loved most and all the world was gone. After a time, she came to a small village that stood in the shadow of another great wood. This wood was as big as the last one, but no two woods could have been more different. Where the wood of life had been bright, inviting, and alive, this one was dark, forbidding, and dead. So forbidding that almost no one went in, and exactly no one came out. It was called the Schwarzwald, the wood of darkness. That's Schwarz Vault, in case you were wondering. But the little village that stood near the Schwarz Vault was not dark at all. No, no, it was ringed by trees that when Gretel arrived had just slipped into their golden robes of autumn. Laughter was in the air as well as the smell of wood burning in fireplaces and apple cider frothing with cinnamon. Gretel walked down the town's single road, looking in the warm windows of the little houses, wishing that someone might invite her inside for some food, cider, and a little human com comfort. But all the doors remained closed to Gretel. She was very tired and very, very lonely, and on the verge of giving up. She sat down, and all of her troubles overwhelmed her. She began to cry. Presently, the door to one of the houses opened, and a silver-haired woman came outside. She went up to the little girl crying by the side of the road and asked her her name and why she was all alone. Gretel told her that she and her brother had long ago run away from home, but that recently her brother had been killed, and she didn't know where to go or what to do. The woman reached out to hold her, and Gretel fell into her arms and buried her face in the woman's neck. She took Gretel into her home and washed her and picked the knots from her hair and gave her some old but clean clothes. Some weeks went by and Gretel had no thought now of where else she should go or what else she should do. For what sense did it make to do anything now that Hansel was gone? And that is how Gretel came to live with the silver-haired widow in the little village. Soon Gretel was just another child there, and though she carried a great sorrow around with her, she put on a brave face. It was the time of the harvest, and everyone worked all day long, including Gretel. In the evenings, when the autumn air became cool, the villagers would gather in in front of the town tavern and drink and laugh and converse while the children ran about in their games. But Gretel had no heart to play. So instead, she sat by the grown-ups and listened to their talk. There was one grown-up in particular whom Gretel liked listening to. He was a young man, cheerful and kind, and he was very handsome. He had long black hair and green eyes flecked with gold that seemed to dance in the light. And it seemed to Gretel that the young man liked her, too, for whenever she, he saw her looking at him, he would smile with lips as deep red before she, blushing, could turn away. So she sat near him always and marveled at his easy jokes and his careless laughter and his wonderful eyes. Occasionally, he would leave the grown-ups in the tavern and go out among the children. He would tease them gently and lift them up, and all of them, particularly the girls, loved him. Sometimes a child would bring to the handsome young man a toy that was broken. It would be a porcelain doll with a finger that had cracked off or a wooden king that had lost its head. The handsome young man would draw from his pocket a tattered piece of twine. He would hold the toy between his knees and tie the twine around the broken place. When he unwound the twine, the toy was as good as new. The children would cry aloud and clap their hands, and the handsome young man would smile. Then he would go back in the tavern with the grown-ups. Each day as the sky turned from pale blue to rich purple to black, 
Gretel would watch the handsome young man say his farewells, slip out of the tavern door, and disappear into the darkness. Out of the village, all alone, she wondered where he went. Well, one warm afternoon, when the last of the barley had been brought in from the fields, Gretel sat by the door of the tavern and watched the men play their favorite game. They played like this. One man balanced a mug on his chin, and everyone else tried to throw coins into it. If the mug didn't fall, the man got to keep all the coins. If it did, he had to buy everyone a drink. It was the young man's turn to have the mug on his chin, and Gretel watched as he weaved about like a snake being charmed, trying to prevent the mug from falling. Just then, one of the young man's friends appeared at Gretel's shoulder. Give him a shout, the friend whispered. See if he can hold it then. Gretel thought this was a funny idea, so she called the young man's name loudly. He was startled, for he had never before heard Gretel speak to him. He turned to her, and as he did, the mug went crashing to the ground. The men cheered, and the man who had put her up to it threw his head back and laughed till he was red from his collar to the top of his bald pate. Pate means head here, guys. But the young man's golden green eyes were wide, and suddenly he rushed at Gretel. His hands were stretched out before him like claws. Gretel screamed as he caught her hard around the waist. And then, in a moment, she was swooping through the air, her long blonde hair streaming out behind her, and his strong arms holding tight onto her hips. And he was laughing, a beautiful, joyous laugh, his head thrown back and his eyes shining. He placed her on the ground again and smiled at her, and Gretel was breathless. He rubbed her head as if she were a puppy, and then he turned to lead the other men into the tavern. Gretel had been fascinated by the young man before, but in that moment when he held her high in the air, and his gold and green eyes were sparkling, and his lips, red lips were curving, and he was laughing, laughing at, with her and her alone. Well, at that moment, Gretel had passed beyond fascination. In that moment, Gretel had fallen in love. It wasn't real love, you might say, just a touch of fascination, you might say. You might say. And if you did, it would prove that you are already old and that you don't remember anything of what it's like to be a child. Every day after that, Gretel made sure to be near the handsome young man with the green eyes and the black hair and the red lips. He would talk to her and make her laugh and steal apples from the harvest barrels for her. And she wondered why she should be so lucky as to get all this attention from him. One day soon before the great harvest feast, as the day's work in the orchards were coming to a close and all the ladders were being folded up and taken in, Gretel noticed a large, beautiful apple still hanging from a bough of a tree above her head. She tried to jump for it to grab it and to put it in the barrels before a bird saw it and pecked holes in it. But it was too high for her to reach. So she called to the handsome young man, asking her, him to come over and pluck it. He came and smiled at her, but it was too high for him, too, so he took her by the hips and lifted her into the air, and she gasped, as she always gasped when he touched her, and then she was high enough into the air to reach the apple, and she picked it. And then, instead of putting her down, he threw her into the air. Gretel screamed, but not in fear. And he caught her and threw her up again, and she was laughing, and he threw her up a third time, but this time he threw her too near an overhanging branch, and she reached up to protect her head, but too late, and she cried out in pain. When he lowered her to the ground, red blood was running in narrow rivulets down her face. Her forehead had struck the branch and left a deep cut just above her eyebrow. She was having trouble seeing out of her left eye through the steady stream of blood. The young man knelt before her. He gazed at the cut. Very gently, very slowly, he applied his lips to it, and he sucked the blood away. Gretel didn't know what to think of that. 
Then he took from his pocket the piece of tattered twine that he used to fix the children's toys, and he wrapped it around her head so that it ran crosswise over the cut. He smiled at Gretel, and then he took the twine away, wiped the blood from Gretel's face. The bleeding had stopped, and her head no longer hurt at all. Now, dear reader, I seem to detect in you a growing unease about this handsome young man. I must say, I think that's very unfair of you. Do you suspect a flower just because it's beautiful? Or a doctor for his mysterious healing abilities? Or the postman simply because you don't know where he sleeps at night? Very unfair indeed. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, you should go ahead and rehire that babysitter that came by for the previous story. Make her take the little ones out of the room at this time. Take them to a movie, a G-rated movie, or an R-rated movie for that matter. Whatever it is, it probably won't be as bad as what is about to come. I know you don't believe me. How much worse could it get, you say? Believe me, much, much worse. As Gretel and the handsome young man walked in, for, in from the orchard that night, they talked about this and that, the weather, the apple crops, the upcoming harvest feast, until suddenly he turned to her and asked her if she didn't wonder where he lived. Gretel shyly replied that she did wonder sometimes. He asked if maybe she would like to see his house. Her heart fluttered, and she told him she would like that very much, and she thanked him for the kind invitation. And then she asked the handsome young man where his house was. A little ways into the forest, he said. In the forest? He laughed. You're not afraid of a silly old forest, are you? No, she lied. I'll leave a path of ashes for you to follow. How's that? Gretel's heart floated up near her mouth. That's good, she said. But that night when she returned home and told the widow that she was going into the Schwarzwald to visit the handsome young man, a great fight began. The widow forbade her from going. It was not right for a child to visit a man's house in the first place, she said. And the fact that it was in the Schwarzwald? Did Gretel know nothing of that place? Was she a fool? Gretel was furious. She raged and cried all night. The next day, her face red and puffy, she told the handsome young man that she could not come, that the widow would not allow it. She smiled, he smiled at her and said not to worry, that they were still friends but he talked to her less that day. She watched him from afar. Rarely did his gaze turn to meet hers. He's forgetting me, she thought. At the end of the day, the handsome young man turned toward the tavern without even glancing at Gretel, as if she no longer existed. Just before he disappeared inside the tavern door, Gretel ran and caught him by the arm. I'll come, she whispered fiercely, urgently. I'll come tomorrow. The young man hesitated, then smiled, and went into the tavern. To be continued.